Welcome back. Let's switch gears now to sports news. Here's Kayode Alayode. Welcome to Sports News. The Nigeria Rugby Football Federation has confirmed it will bid to host the Africa Rugby Cup 1C, which will kick off on March the 17th through to the 26th. The tournament, which will also include the national teams from Cameroon and Algeria, will also serve as a big test for the senior national rugby team, the Black Stallions, ahead of the Africa Cup 7th Championship. The tournament in November will serve as qualifiers for the 2018 Commonwealth Games in Gold Coast, Australia. The Black Stallion will be looking to repeating their fine form of 2013 when they qualified for Glasgow 2014 Commonwealth Games but were unable to participate owing to insufficient funds. Meanwhile, Nigeria's capital, Abuja, is agog as Africa's biggest football awards ceremony takes centre stage tomorrow. Governor's striker, Pierre Emery Kubameyang, faces stiff opposition from Algeria's Riyar Mahrez and Senegal's Sadio Mani in his bid to retain the African best player crown. Super Falcons coach Florence Omagwimi and Super Falcons striker Asisato Shuala were shortlisted for the Coach of the Year and Women Player of the Year. 2016 African Women Nations Cup champion Super Falcons are also in the race for the Women's National Team of the Year. Super Eagles pair of Alex Iwobi and Kelechi Ihenacho are also listed for the Youth and Promising Talents category. Premier League relegation strugglers Hull City are on the verge of appointing Portuguese coach Marco Silva as the new manager. The club sacked Mike Athelan as manager on Tuesday, less than three months after appointing him on a permanent basis. Silva resigned as coach of Greek champions Olympiakos in June 2016. The 38-year-old led the club to a record 43rd league title last season and won the Portuguese Cup with Sporting Lisbon in 2015. Elsewhere, midfielder Axel Witzel has become the latest high-profile player to move to China, joining promoted Tianjin Huanxian after turning down an offer from Serie A champions Juventus. Witzel's current club, Zenit St. Petersburg, confirmed that the Russian and Chinese sides had agreed a deal for the player who, at 27, is at the peak of his career. Witzel had been chased by Juventus since the previous transfer window, but it has been widely reported that Witzel, who has won eight caps for Belgium and played at the 2014 World Cup and Euro 2016, could earn as much as 18 million euros a year at his new club. And that's it on Sports News. Amarachi is back in just a moment. Stay with us. Happening on the continent, rumors making the rounds that Gambian president-elect Adama Barrow has been assassinated by unknown gunmen have been debunked. A tweet from an unverified account in his name says, we would like to inform you that the president-elect is alive and well. End of quote. Some other verified Twitter accounts have also described the reports as mere rumors and are discouraging peddling of false information. Gambia has been in the news since the December 1st presidential election in which opposition candidate Adama Barrow defeated President Yair Jammeh in a shock victory which the president initially accepted but later rejected. Calls from regional blocs and African presidents are still ongoing to pressure President Jammeh into stepping aside and allowing the ethos of democracy to prevail. Much earlier today, the country's army chief, Usman Baje, in a statement to a local newspaper, declared his support for President Jammeh and the Gambian army. Some members of the Israeli government have thrown their support behind 20-year-old Sergeant Elo Azaria, an Israeli soldier convicted of killing a wounded Palestinian. 
Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and some other members of the governing coalition are calling for his pardon. Azraya, 19 at the time, shot 21-year-old Abdul Fattah al-Sharif in the head while he lay immobile on the road. Scuffles erupted on Wednesday outside an Israeli military court as several hundreds of supporters gathered to protest against an expected conviction of 20-year-old Sergeant Elo Azaria. He is charged with manslaughter in the killing of a Palestinian assailant whom he shot dead as he lay wounded and motionless on the ground after attempting to stab an Israeli soldier in the West Bank city of Hebron last March. The case has divided Israel, with many citizens, right-wing politicians and some celebrities rallying behind Azaria, saying he is being made a scapegoat and should be let off lightly. I think it's a scandal that the country uh, don't protect about their soldiers. I think that um, this soldier came to protect about little children, about families, about parents. Um, this guy came to uh, do an attack uh, to hurt about these families. This soldier is a hero. Listen, he's a hero. He has to get a prize from the army. But uh, the minute the chief of staff and the minister of defense uh, were against him, they elect the judges, they tell the judges what to decide, and uh, he didn't have any hope. On the other side, stand serving members of the military establishment who say the shooting cannot be countenanced that Azaria, who made far right anti Palestinian postings on Facebook before being conscripted, acted in cold blood and outside military procedures. And the main news again the Nigerian army today announced it has begun the process of de radicalization of captured and repentant insurgents in the northeast, just as it vowed to prosecute those accused of collaborating with Boko Haram militants. Also today, experts from the WHO obtained samples from a child suspected of poliomyelitis in Cross River State for confirmation. But the Federal Minister of Health insisted that the case is clubfoot and not polio. That's news at 10 tonight. Thank you for watching. I am Amarachi Obani. Good night.